Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Star Trek. We're going to start with our cold open. Our supplemental log. Jay, okay. would you like... Oh, I'm yeah. Trying. You're muted in the meat. I will fix that. Okay. Jay, would you like to... Uh, uh, Lieutenant Tila Net log supplemental. Uh, as of a few hours ago, Captain Stadi has made the decision to separate the solidarity. The reason for this decision is that uh, we are currently in a compromising position involving a Romulan vessel uh, that we intercepted while investigating a nebula within the area. Uh, it was discovered that within the nebula there was a ship and it's still a bit fuzzy, but uh, Captain Stadia and I had sensed two beings within the ship. Uh, and it seems those beings are dying. Uh, the name Faisal Hoax and Praetar Lon are these supposed beings and it has been uh, noted that they are a high uh, priority and that we are to rescue them at all costs. With this directive, uh, Captain Stadi has decided to separate our saucers with me commanding the secondary hull. Uh, the plan as of right now is to try to lure the Romulan vessel away primary hall while the secondary hall tries to uh, enter the nebula from around the back. There are 500 civilians and staff and crew within the secondary hall and I have just been made lieutenant and asked to lead them into a unknown base. The only thing I can hope for is that we all make it out of this unscathed and not too worse for wear. Log out. Uh, Captain, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, Lieutenant, um, Captain, um, what, what, what do I call you? Lieutenant's fine. L Lieutenant, I'm ready to, I'm ready to launch the probe when, when you are. Ah, oh, I pray this is the right thing to do. All right, launch probe. Probe away. Oh, let's cross our fingers and hope this works. Sh shields are holding. Lieutenant, I'm I'm gonna get to I'm I'm gonna get to 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 the transporter room so I can assist when when we get a signal. All right. Thank you. Please keep me updated. Ducky out. And he cuts it. Um, is there anything you would like to do, Lieutenant Annette? I know the last time I reached out, well, that was a cluster, but I... Oh, no. I believe oh. I was able to sense that the beings were in a state of duress um, uh, on possibly death. I don't think I'm Knew I could uh, determine how bad they were. Can I try to reach out against if I get so if I can try to establish kind of yeah. like telepathic? You can attempt to try to break through the nebula. It is going to cost you some points, though. Okay. Um, we'll go with three for these points. Do you have three left? Uh, this is a, I have seventeen apparently. Okay. Cool. So, so, so that's three. Oh, that is a thirty-one. Under ninety. Yeah. Yeah. So you reach out and it's weird. It's it's. So you know the reports, the life sign reports were coming back that 
it was a trill with with the symbiont mm. um and that that's what you were you were sensing yeah um you're getting such weird things it's it's convoluted it's 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 mixed up it's almost like there's something interfering with you um there are definitely two consciousnesses um one of which is is seems to be unconscious the other one is calm but a heightened sense of awareness they know how much danger they're in um, but they're just they're, they're they're just they don't seem to be panicked or like mm-hmm. they're in just shock they're they it seems like they're used to this almost which goes with, you know, them being a Sector 31 agent. Oh, shit, that is right. Uh, L- Lieutenant. Yes, Becky. Um, the, the, the probe has made it halfway through. The plan is working perfectly. But I'm getting strange readings. I'm getting really strange readings. We we what? need to make a decision right now, but I I don't know. Lieutenant, the, the of shields re- are gonna fail if I don't transport them now. But there's two separate people. Wait, there's just wait, there's two separate people? Yes, but I'm gonna need to transport now. Make the decision. All right, Ducky, beam him up. All right. Uh, the conversation lulls for a minute. We're actually going to go to this uh, transporter room. Okay. And in the transporter room, you see Ducky's fiddling with the knobs. He's trying to lock on, and you see the two... Two images starting to phase in. One of them seems to be kneeled down. The other one's laying on the ground. And as they phase in, you see Lieutenant Hera Noor kneeling over the body of Lieutenant Commander Horatio Singer. Horatio Singer is out cold. And. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Solidarity. Its mission, to chart the uncharted, to learn, to seek, to discover, to step into the unknown, side by side, united as one.
Welcome back, everybody. Big surprise, the return of Dana Levy as Lieutenant Aranor. Um, so, um, big reveal uh, right before we did our opening, on our cold opening. So, But before we go on, let's go around and introduce who we are, who we're playing, um, and we're going to start with the captain. Captain. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up? Um, I'm Captain Evenson. I'm Maddie, aka So Maddie Games. I use he/him pronouns, and I'm playing Captain Stotty, who is um so ready for this. <laughs> um, uh, I am currently in the Star Drive section, and um, I am um am going to go fuck with a big ass. A uh, Romulan warbird, or something. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because I'm feeling saucy. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, thank you, Maddie. Uh. Next, let's go over to Lieutenant Commander Maroc Ulfrig. Oh, I go by Ulfrig online. I play Lieutenant Commander Morak, who is the Klingon Chief of Engineering who is also in the drive section in engineering, frantically trying to think of ways to not die at the Romulan's hands because that would just be like so embarrassing for a yeah, Klingon. Yeah, yeah. Like you can, your whole family just dishonor, dishonor forever. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ulfrig. Now let's go to... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh, we're doing, Choices. Are we doing rank? Luke, yeah, but there's two ranks. Lieutenant well, because, Heronor. Because, Promoted first well, is the way that it's done then. Lieutenant Heronor is a is a lieutenant, and Lieutenant uh, Annette is a lieutenant junior grade. That's mm -hmm. that's correct. So, Lieutenant Heronor. Dana, <clears throat> welcome back. Hi, everybody. I missed you. <laughs> Yeah, hi, I'm Dana. I'm Dana Lee B on the internet. I use they, she pronouns, but tonight I'm returning as Lieutenant Heronor, your Vorda con officer, who uses she, her pronouns. I almost forgot how to say the word pronouns. I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> also, I definitely don't have any explaining to do. I don't know what you're talking about. That's all right. That's, 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 that's par for the course for this crew. That's for another um, conversation. Yeah, yeah. that's the... I think I've heard Stadi say that multiple times now. Um, <laughs> he never gets to have those conversations. No, no, no. And next, the acting captain of the saucer section, Lieutenant Annette. Oh, hi, lovelies. I'm Jay. I use she/her pronouns. Uh, tonight, I am playing Lieutenant Tila Annette, who also uses she/her pronouns. She is the Betazoid Count. And why the fuck am I leading this ship? <laughs> uh, I didn't go to school for this. <laughs> you are now. Yeah. This is and school. <laughs> finally, our civilian science officer, Kate. Hi, I'm Kate. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Romana Jackstat, your civilian science officer, uh, also acting science officer, um, who uh, has been acknowledged for about five minutes, but also promoted in five minutes. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. <laughs> it's been a lot of movement. A lot of yeah. movement in the last couple of weeks. Um, so as... Uh, Jay explained to us there is a two-pronged plan to deal with these Romulans. The battle section will go and face off against them. Wow. The saucer section went in the back door and we saw how that played out. And we're going to stick with the saucer section just for a minute because... Lieutenant Nor, you look up and you see Ducky just jaw dropped open. 
Lieutenant? Uh. uh. Lieutenant, I need you to get the Lieutenant Commander Singer to sick bay immediately. Roger, Lieutenant. Roger. Who is acting captain right now? The uh, Lieutenant Annette. What? The captain put her in charge. She's she's running the ship, the saucer section. We we split the ship. The the captain's going to fight the Romulans. What? I run. <laughs> <laughs> and you see Lieutenant Aranor just running for the bridge. <laughs> now we will cut uh, over. <laughs> now we will cut over to Captain. You are heading towards the last known location of the Romulan Warbird. Okay. What are you going to do? All right. Um. Okay. Uh, can we get... Um, so we know that the Romulans were cloaked, right? That is correct. Right. Okay. So... Uh, well, um, okay, we need to um, cause a distraction, right? That's why we're doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I would like to... Um, Um, okay. Is there some kind of... Alright. We could... Is there a way we can trick their sensors? Um, to like... Think that we're in one place when we're in another? Um... There have been, uh, multiple times that that has happened and so what i'm thinking is like what if what if um what if myself and um my my new chief of science here um start to um <clears throat> cause these like um you know sensor projections essentially and and bounce us around you know so that we're like ping-ponging around and i feel like if we get the timing right that would be a great distraction of like what the fuck are they doing and where's the saucer but what the fuck are they doing and maybe this might distract them from the fact that we don't have our saucer um one of the no names that are taking people's I don't know. uh places on the bridge right now goes captain we could launch probes as soon as we drop out of warp okay that could, that could at least give the sense that send out signals that it's a bigger ship than it is that's great let's do that so. all right. right um so uh that's gonna be a two-prong attack if you guys are gonna work on that real quick yeah uh Romana, you're going to need to roll um, Oh, dice. Right. Something to try and program the thing. Okay. So computer use or I would even allow as geometrics or tactical um, robotics. Oh boy, I need something more. I would, I, would, I would allow any of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh Maroc, you're gonna need to roll uh, mechanical repair to to uh, 
fix up those probes. Ooh, okay. Uh, that is a five. Under? Under 38. That is an hard, or extreme success. So, you're pretty sure, Romana, that the program you just wrote will give... It, it isn't going to confuse <clears throat> them where the solidarity is. <laughs> it's going to make them believe that you just came back with a fleet of starships. Yes. Um, that should make them pause long enough for you, hopefully, to get the upper advantage. Okay, and you said mechanical repair? Mechanical repair, yes. Uh, that is a 44 under 66. Okay, that's a success. You're pretty sure that the the probes... Uh, you had set, you have set up three probes. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, as soon as you'll, you drop out of warp, they'll launch and spread out across the system and start sending out the signals. Excellent. So... Um, anything else you would like to do before you drop out of work? Um, yeah, um, can we get a quick comm link to the saucer section? Certainly try. Okay, what do I need to do? Communications officer, uh, nobody has a communications officer. Oh, I'll, I'll handle communications because I'm here. Okay. What do you want me to roll, man? Uh, I'm actually going to need you to roll a computer use or a counterintelligence. Oh, okay. I will do computer use. Um, because I'm not feeling that lucky. <laughs> I got a whole 10 in counterintelligence. <laughs> Okay. Um Oh shit, I should have rolled counterintelligence. Um that's an eight. Um under forty six. Okay. Uh the comms go through. But there was heavy interference. Eight under forty six, right? So that's eight under forty six. Su extreme success. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's heavy interference. Stop. Study to Annette. Come in. Cap. Captain. Thing Okay. Captain, I, I I can't I can't hear you. It's it's every. Everything. Oh. Okay. 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 Is everything okay? Whoa. Uh, uh. You have you have just started the launch of the probe at this time. Okay. Uh. Currently, we are uh, launching the probe. Uh, Ducky says the shields won't wouldn't hold for long, so we had to beam aboard the two individuals. I haven't heard anything from the transporter room. Did Actually, say two? Uh, yes, there were apparently two beings on the ship. I know that's different from what we originally thought. Uh, oh, okay, stop, out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Worst game of telephone ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that sounded confusing. Did did she say two individuals? Did anybody else hear that? Yes, Captain. Okay, cool. Um, this should be interesting. Okay, I can't wait to have that conversation. All right. Um. <laughs> All right, then. Huh. All right, let's do this. Captain, we're, we're approaching position. 
All right. <clears throat> um. And what are we waiting for? Dropping out of warp, sir. Okay. <laughs> so we do that, right? And then they drop out of warp, and as soon as you do, I'm assuming you have a, a standing order to deploy the probes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the probes deploy. Currently, you have no visual. Sure. On the Romulan warper. Okay. I'm, um... But we are going to go into initiative order. Okay. Cool. Because this is a tactical situation. Great. Um, that being said, uh, what is your dexterity? Stadi's dexterity. Oh, oh, Stadi's dexterity? It's great. It's 40. Okay. So, the Romulan Warbird gets to act first. Sure, sure, sure. But while they're acting, because uh, they are currently cloaked. And we're reacting. Uh-huh. Uh, you all can discuss what you're going to do. Okay. So, set those intents, yeah. So, um, that being said, so this new combat system that, that I, I kind of uh -huh. threw together, okay? Uh -huh. um, I explained it to Maddie. You, the captain decides the initiative order of his crew. So, he decides who's going to go with. And you all get to discuss the strategy. And each position, all five positions, right? There's five? There's six. There are six. Remember? Yeah, there's um, command, tactical, con, communication, yep. science, and engineering. Yep, so all six go in a turn. It's one turn uh, per right. round. Um, so we have... Um, so I'm currently uh, in command. Yep. I am currently on the con as um, Anson Quinzel. Who, uh, Dana, do you have any of your backup characters here? I mean, they could be. Which, which triplet would you like? Do we have a tactical? Yes. The you want Kitty? Kitty. Perfect. Kitty goes boom. I, I love it. I'm here for it. Okay. Uh, Jay, what about you? Do you have a backup character that could fit into, um, let's see, who's left? We have communications. Communications and... Um, or we can even, um, they can even take a uh, con. Um, uh, I can whip one up right quick. Okay. Okay. That works. Uh, so, we, could, we could even make it uh, easier and um, f just for now, if you want to use your engineer and put him at, at the communications station. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good with that. Yep. Okay. Um, so, Devon. Yep. Yeah, Devon. Perfect. Um, we have, uh, and we have Morak on engineering um, duty. Oh, we have Jack on Stat on science. Um, Puts Kitty at tactical, and we have still have Quinzel at con. Okay. All right. So you all can discuss how you want to do this. This is a, a, a role play heavy combat system that is that is based in turns. Okay. Right. So don't think of your initiative as oh well, I can't say anything until it's my turn. You right. guys discuss what you're going to do at a time. Then the c command decides the order of what we're going to do. Okay. Um, but the, while you guys are discussing the Romulans, we'll be taking the Sure. Um, so now we 
we it would probably be a little easier um, to know what we're gonna do once we know what the Romulans do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It will. It will if if they do anything. Well, if it's anything that that you guys can see. Yes, of course, obviously, or detect. Um, so I think maybe we start with um, science um, on sensors. Um, so that we can um, try to pick up what they're doing if they're you know doing anything right um, mm-hmm. how they're reacting to our uh, our our rival um, how does that sound does that sound like a good start yeah okay makes sense okay um, then from there we can I think <laughs> react with um, I would say probably well, I, I guess we need to figure out what they're doing um, if they if we aren't able to pick up anything or see anything I guess the next step would be communications right because we're attempting to distract them so if we <coughs> um, if we aren't provoking an action from them then I guess we need to uh, try to talk them talk to them right so um, as you can see in the science division um, Kate uh, yeah. there is that one that's question mark uh, yes. if you come up with an idea that's one I'm still working on so Okay. For your third move, just let me know. But I think what Maddie is getting at is a sector scan okay. to either uh, detect their Romulan cloak or mm-hmm. any signal that might be being sent out. Yes. yes. So a sector scan would be rolling astrometrics. Astrometrics. Yep. Yes. And so you got. Science and comms figured out what's next. Um, and for command, I want to, um, because of how difficult it is to, um, pick up on what a cloaked ship is doing, I feel like I should probably assist the science, um, so you're gonna roll your leadership? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, okay. My leadership is slightly better than my astrometrics, so yeah. And what about tactical, con, and engineering? What are they doing? Um, well, I feel like um, those are all gonna be reactionary, right? Okay. Um, okay. I feel. If, if am I missing anything, um, folks? Captain, if I could make a suggestion. Yes. Well, we don't know if they're going to be uncloaked when we come out of warp, we could possibly go ahead and disseminate their communications by just sending out an all-mass comm to possibly intercept them, or at least to be able to block their communications. Maybe scramble their sensors. I like it. That's great. And then I can be ready on tactical, if and when needed. Excellent. Thank you, Hawthorne. Um, then, yeah, let's do that. So that would be a a flood, a uh, scramble or a flood. Or scramble. Flood is, is oh okay. Uh, so that would be probably um uh probably a scramble, right? Yeah, I would yeah. say a scramble. Scramble's to, good. Yeah. To block their communications or a intercept, flood to attempt to make them pause. Right. Give you a breath. Okay. Maybe we'll go with the scramble because um, we don't know what they're um, quite what they're doing, and maybe just uh, ensuring that they can't uh, communicate out is probably um, probably only helpful to us because we don't know how close there are other Romulans. You know that is true. Um, so then we would probably start with. Um, 
Should we start with that and then do the sensor readings? Because that would probably... Maybe that might help the sensor readings? Uh. So many decisions. I love it. Um, okay, let's do this. Um, no, we're going to do sensors first. Uh, based on that, um, if we pick up nothing, then we go ahead, roll the comms, uh, flood, or we roll the, the scramble, and then um, and then we can maneuver from that. Okay. So command needs to be rolled first, and then engineering and con and tactical are going to be reactionary, correct? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and roll your, your inspire. Roll. So roll your leadership. See how many bonus die Romana's going to get. Uh, that's a nine under 59. That is an extreme success. Uh -huh. So that means that, it. Romana, you're going to get three bonus die. So you get to roll four dice that have the double zeros on them, or the double First digits on them. Yeah. Okay. And, and then just one of the d10s to get your lower number. And the game, okay. it's going to be your lowest. Number. And whichever the lowest of those four dice are. Okay. It's um, like quadruple advantage. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Or triple advantage, technically, because your advantage is one. I mean, it's actually five those dice. Mm be much easier once you have a target. Well, obviously. I mean, you got quadruple advantage to, to try and find them, so... So explain that to me again. <laughs> so you're going to take uh, four of the, the percentile dice and okay. roll those. Um, whichever okay. is the lowest is going to be your your top number, your beginning number of your percentile roll. And then you just roll one of the, the regular d10s to get your second number on that. That's a two. It's a two. You, you got two out of what? And that's so I got a double zero and a two. Yeah, but what's your astrometrics? Um, thirty. Okay. Well, yeah. Went away from a, a from a critical success, but it's still an extreme success. Mm -hmm. With the extreme success, Romana, you are getting a signal. Coming from a blank spot in space mm -hmm. that is actually jamming your communications right now. Oh. Rude. Because that's what they chose to do. I see. So you have a location of the ship, of the cloaked Romulan warbird. You just need to tell the captain. They're over there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we they're know jamming they're... our signal. They're oh, cloaked, they're... but they're over there. They're jamming us. Oh wow! Well, let's bring the peanut butter, folks. Okay. Um, <laughs> what's uh? No raspberry joke. What's our next move? So, um, calm was what you said was next, but you can change it. You're the captain. Well, we know where they are now. Um, so. I want to... 
Okay. Work with me here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, if we... So we, we projected the probes, right? Uh -huh. And so we made them made it look like there were multiples of a multiple ships or multiple something. Multiple ships coming in. Coming in. Um so I want to since we know the location of the ship, I wanna say the next move is con and I want to um essentially um, go right at them. Rolling an attack pattern. Um, like I'm ramming them. Maneuver. You know, navigation. Like going straight at them. Yep. Um, I want it to look like we don't know where they are. We're just going right through them. Um, and... I feel like that's going to get a reaction of some sort. So, but go I, ahead. But go I ahead. want to do this in a way that... That it looks like we're flying right at them, but at the last minute... Morak, do you, you want to play a game of chicken? Yeah, 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 exactly. I loved um, playing that game. Um, so what if we go right at them, but then pop out at the last second? What can we leave in our place? Like, photon torpedoes? Huh? I don't know. Print it to the Galaxy Quest move. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't watch things. Um, <laughs> so would you? Would you be trying to like, like you say, it's like a game of chicken, but at the last minute you're gonna try to. Do you want to go up or you want to go down? I think I want to go down, but I want to like leave something still coming at them that you know. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Makes sense. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's so what good. you do is uh, Quinzel is going to roll con. Okay. Uh, is going to roll maneuver because that is a, a special maneuver. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maneuver that's special. Then uh, is roll navigate. Okay. All right. Uh, Hawthorne would roll um, target and attack. Is there some place you want to? specifically have them target um do we have a schematic of roughly of like locate you know like system locations on a warbird not you have very little information we have very little information um i would say then the um just the center this you know towards okay. the the just just hit it yeah, just hit it, like in the face, you know, of the bird. <clears throat> right in the beak, you know, um, the beak of the warper. <laughs> and and do you want them to use torpedoes or phasers? So you have two torpedo, so you can launch. So that's the other thing I forgot to put on here. Yeah. So when you pick to do a targeted attack, uh -huh. you can do either two torpedoes or uh -huh. four phaser banks because of how you're armed. Okay. Torpedoes would... do more damage. Phasers, you have more of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I would say, like, part of the part of the plan is, is to kind of um, pop out so probably torpedoes because it leaves something heading in that direction that isn't like tied to the ship, right? You know, um, 
it doesn't give away where we went up or down you know what i mean you know what i mean okay. does that make sense yep so i would say leaving torpedoes going and then um like I don't know. Can we put some sparklers on those torpedoes or something? Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I like to think that Stadi just keeps them around for special occasions. <laughs> I just want things to sparkle all the time, right? Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so Quinzel is rolling a navigate. Well, mm. first, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you flood their sensors. Oh. For com com comms. Sounds good. Oh, right. Yeah. Because all they'll have is a visual and they won't have that. So, yes. So, we'll have com do the... Um, is that a scramble? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go with scramble. Okay. So then, so, um, yeah, so we'll have um, uh, Barker go ahead and roll a computer use. Wenzel's going to roll a maneuver, navigate. Uh -huh. uh, Hawthorne is going to roll a uh, tactical. Okay. Uh, with torpedoes, our power level two. Photon torpedoes are power level mm -hmm. two. Okay. So that's 1d10 per power level <clears throat> per level of success, and you're firing two. Does that make sense to you, Dana? It will when I do it. Okay. I'll explain it to you <laughs> as it goes. Remember, everybody, I'm, we're, we're, we're play testing this as we go. Right. Right. Um, in addition... The question is how quickly you want this fight to be over with. Because you could give up your last move, engineering, to channel power into those torpedoes. I was just bigger. going to say, I have an option here to move power from one system to another. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I also got a 40 on my... 40 under 50 on my computer use. So that's just a regular success. So uh, they do not get to attempt until to break it up until the start of their next turn because you guys went second. Okay. Their, their calm officer already operated. Okay. So um, I need to roll con? Yep. Okay. You need to roll your navigation. Holy shit. Okay, that's an 18 under 60. Hard success. Nice. Hard success. Um, yeah. You you make you sell it. You completely sell it. You, they think they're gonna, you're going to ram them. Um and then For engineering, you got mm -hmm. a 12 under what? 52. So you're so close. Oh. So close. Two points away from an extreme spend, success on that. Spend your luck. Well, heck yeah. It's only two points. That's a great time to spend luck. <clears throat> so now you got an extreme success. That means... So one, two, three. Three, three extra power levels that you get to deal with, Para. And... Yeah, I'm Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Kitty. Meow. Kitty. Three Kitty. Power level. I know the hair is really similar. <laughs> <laughs> and I should be wearing yellow, but you know, my, my clothes are dirty. So oh, that God, means that all together with two torpedoes, you're, you're going to have basically seven power levels. Seven D10? Three. Now... Yes, theoretically. But first, theoretically. we have to roll the tactical. Right? You have to roll yeah. two attack, two attacks. So. Two tacticals. Four yeah. and three. So go ahead and roll two tacticals. So one gets four and one gets three. Yep. If I make them. Yep. 
Do I get bonuses if I get extra success? Yes. Like extra oh, sweet. Let me double check what my tactical is before I roll it. Like I said, this is a lot of talking, but it's quick because you can literally destroy the ship. Oh, the tactical could be better. I believe 14 under 50. That's a hard success. That's for the first one. Okay. That's the. How much would it be for an extreme? Four points of luck. Yeah, let's do it. And that's the four charge? Yeah. All right. Is that is that a bonus die thing or is that a multiplier? That's a multiplier. Oh, multiplier. Shit. Second torpedo is twenty-one under fifty. So that's a uh, hard success. So times three and times two. So, so roll times. forty ten times three oh. and three d ten times two. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Okay, so oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> 4d10 times 3. 3d10 times 2. And their oh, shields are not up. No, so, they're cloaked. 1, yeah. 2, they're cloaked. 3, 4. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. Times three. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that math right now. I'll do it. 81. Excellent. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then three times two. Need to look at my, my cheat sheet for a Romulan Warbird now. 22 times two, 44. That's oh, 125. 125 points of damage. I want you to know that if their shields were up, that wouldn't even got through their shields. Yeah. I want you to know that. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Klingon ships, Romulan ships, Romulan warbird. Their structure. Their hole is... All right, cool. <clears throat> as the as you 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 do the uh, just flying straight at them, um, Romana, you're tracking them with your with your sensors by by how they're sending the signal out to jam your signals. You see them just starting to move away, but the ship is. Big. It's bigger than you. It's clumsier than you. It doesn't move as fast as you. And as it's pulling away, the uh, the solidarity just dives underneath. And right then, Hawthorne sends those torpedoes, and you see it just smack into at first nothingness, and then. It appears as powers drop. You guys did how much was it? 125 points 125. damage. Yeah. So its structure, its whole, is uh, 140. So you guys have caused multiple hole breaches. Mm -hmm. Its power levels have dropped. And it is listing to the side all before it's had a chance to raise its shoes. Okay. I love pressing the big red button. <laughs> so we want to essentially circle back and take them out, right? Or we talk. We distract long enough for the saucer section to escape the nebula. At this time, we're going to actually cut away. Okay. We're going to cut away to the saucer section. And Lieutenant Aranor comes running onto the bridge. Absolutely full speed, hand over side. 
contemplated stopping a random civilian for their comm badge and thought better of it and just kept going. <laughs> Smack open the button into the into the makeshift bridge. Well, it's the regular bridge. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, Luke. Congrats on your promotion. Lieutenant Nor? Hey. I'm uh, reporting for duty. Uh, 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 um, uh, and I, <laughs> and I just, I just hit my call. Uh, uh, Annette Oh, to, I should get to, one of those. Annette to Captain Stein. Hey, Ensign, give me your calm. Uh, <laughs> Annette, uh, I get, she's nothing, like cussing. It, all you get is feedback. Something is interfering with the comms. Oh, they're probably uh, jamming communications. Oh yeah, uh, that and the nebula. All right, yeah, that's two things. Um, we'll 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 deal with this later. Um, right now. Oh boy, what? Okay, we need to get out of this nebula as quickly, and hopefully, do we? And like, do we know what's happening between? The pro okay. You're on the other side of a nebula that's caustic in nature. Your sensors gotcha. All right. are not, no idea. All right. We need to get out of this nebula as quickly as we can. Our shields are not going to hold up for much longer. Ensign, move. <laughs> and I limp over to the con station. <laughs> just shove them out of the, just shove them out of the chair. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately start evasive maneuvers out of the nebula as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, so you guys actually didn't enter the nebula? The Only the probe entered the nebula? Oh, we're on the edge of it. You're on the, the edge, edge of the nebula. Yeah, the You're edge. edging it. I'm on the <clears> edge. <throat> edging it. Edging it. Edging, <laughs> edging that back door. Wow. Um, I fit in. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Wow. So you, you, uh, nor Lieutenant Nor, you get back in the in the driver's seat. This is your familiar driver's oh. seat. Um, and I adjust you... the seat because it's been moved. <laughs> um, is there anything else you would want to do, Captain, I... Captain Annette? <laughs> Jake? Yes. Sorry. Is there anything else uh, you would like to do? What are your orders? I feel like Annette is just staring at the back of Hera's head, like trying to process what, like. What yeah, I know think. my hair is growing out. Stop um, looking at it. Sorry, sorry. There's a, lo a lot has happened. And this is just adding on to the pile of things happening. Um, we need to try to get uh, out of the nebula's area and try to reestablish communications with Captain Stadi if we can, and see how they're holding up, and if we can maybe provide some assistance to them. So navigation and communication, I've got it. Who wants to navigate, and who's going to roll for the communication? Um, I feel like pork is at ops. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Oh. Lieutenant, welcome back. Lieutenant? <clears throat> um, Captain. Are you okay? Um. I, okay. That's a love. Lieutenant Pork, please reestablish communications while I get us out of this hellhole. Hi, sir. <laughs> go ahead and roll navigate. And go ahead and roll computer use, Maddie. Pork. Oh my god, these. Okay. <laughs> these are my Star Trek dice. These are my Rilo dice. Because um, they roll low. Um, that's 11. Under 70. 
nice. Um, I must have been drunk when I decided on my navigate score, but I got a nine under a twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice and easy anyway. But you do this cool little like bank that just kind of skims the the nebula, um, creates like this cool little effect as you as you're turning around and heading out. What? Where are you going? What course are you setting? Do we have a general sense for where the uh, star drive section was before? Is that in the communication log? They, 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 yeah, that they, they know where the. We should have a rendezvous point set. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. You do have a rendezvous point set. Then that's where we're going. Yeah. The roll would be better, but Hera's dying, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, so. Are you okay? Yeah. So the reason I was asking Dana what Hera was doing is because you have both that information. You have the information of where they're at because they ran into the Royal Mill and Warbird before. They knew where they were going. And you have the rendezvous point. Where would Hera go? <laughs> um, Hera, back on duty on the Solidarity, would go to the rendezvous point. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Alright, so uh, communications you're able to break through. Okay. And it's right when the boom happened. Oh. So you can talk to yourself. If you want. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I, we've gotten through to the bridge. Uh, Lieutenant Annette is just staring at Lieutenant Nor. Please relay to the captain that we are heading to the rendezvous point and please fail to mention that I am on the ship. Tell them all is going according to plan, and until we get there, there can be no distractions, Lieutenant. You you understand that the captain is, um, well, uh, does not like deception. It's not deception. It's for their safety. <coughs> Very well. Yep. Yes. Solidarity. Star drive. We're on the way to the rendezvous point. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> One wig on, other wig on the other side. Just change which way your head is facing. A Victor Victoria situation. Yes. That's great. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah. We're, um, we're handling shit here. All right. Thank you. Study out. All right, what are we doing? Where are we at? So, um, you just did that. What are you going to do? Are you going to go around for another attack? It is their turn because they go before you. Of course. I want to see what they do. What? No. Well, I, they have amazing stats and they have like they should be like tearing you up. That first round, they ro rolled horribly, and you guys rolled amazingly. Uh -huh. This round, trying to do repairs, horrible. Failed repairs. Their engineer failed repairs. Yeah, I knocked around a bit. Uh huh. They may, also, they may also have gotten beaten up beforehand. We don't know. Interesting. It's fine. So, with everything that's going on and with everything I just rolled, There is a communications. Oh, is there? Mm -hmm. Uh, they're hailing. They're hailing. 
open hailing frequencies. Captain. You know you may just start a war. Firing on a Romulan vessel unprovoked. I wasn't firing on anything. I didn't know there was a Romulan vessel here. Oh my god. I thought you left. <laughs> are you actually being deceptive or are you being Petty. facetious? I am being completely <laughs> facetious because I'm not deceptive ever. Romana just turns around. <laughs> if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. I'm just facing my panel. Just head down. Are you saying then why were you firing torpedoes, Captain? Oh, gosh. You know, sometimes you just got to clear out those torpedo banks, and if there's nothing there, what's the harm? We will be leaving now. I thought so. I would I would leave this between us because gosh, if this got around it would be your ass. He turns and goes like this and it just the communication just cuts out. Bye and Felicia. The Romulan Warbird starts pulling away. Limping uh, away. L listing away. <laughs> until it's clear of the cloud and then it hits warp. The warp engines were still okay. That was nice. That is exactly how I want combat to be. It's this long story, basically. I like it. It's not like... Because that's Star Trek. I love it. That worked out great. I like it. Anyway. Captain, what are you going to do now? All right. Um, let's, uh, let's turn this puppy around and head to the rendezvous point so we can, uh, like get, put our ship back together. And with that, we're going to go ahead and go to break your first ship to ship combat. Boom, 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 boom. Nice work, know. everyone. And very nice work. Everyone's dice. Yeah, right? <laughs> Those are the real winners right there. Oh, my God. I uh, cannot believe how bad I rolled. <laughs> I can't believe how good I'm rolling tonight. Jesus Christ. You cursed it. You just cursed it. <laughs> I don't curse nothing. On rollerblades. <laughs> On rollerblades. On a pogo stick in his butt. All right. This is how we roll. Oh. Um oh mm -hmm. yeah, there is a disc there is um uh there Find is it. um it's the the channel's called um Clip Clip, Clip, Clip Ray. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the Twitch section. Um and yeah, I should probably oh hold on. Let me see. Where are you? Oh yeah, it's gonna take me a minute. Okay. Um but yeah. Hey, Max. Mm, um, Hi, Max. So we'll be back, right, in uh, 10 or so? Yep. And <laughs> um, peace out, Girl Scout. And break. Break. Welcome back, everybody. Um, in the first half, uh, the U.S. Solidarity totally whooped up on a Romulan Warbird, um, which should not have happened, but it did. I know, right? <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> Lucky rolls. That's what that was. Sunshine uh, Miracles. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. That's a Just thing. Just lucky rolls. Right, right, right. Not the greatest strategy ever. 
really wasn't. <laughs> oh, it was ballsy. As so I'll be damned. Like, once again, Jaleesa's like, maybe we shouldn't. But I'm like, but who, who? I ain't the captain. <laughs> so as you turn and start heading to rendezvous points in your in your respective ships does anybody want to do anything are are we still separated mm-hmm. yeah going to the rendezvous point and, to meet up okay um i would like to can, it, it, are we close enough that i can te- telepathically talk to captain stoddy Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. You're, you're not here. <laughs> uh, I just want to let you know because you were gone when it happened. I explicitly told <laughs> Lieutenant Pork when he re- re- reconnected with the Star Drive section to not mention that I was on board. Oh, okay. Not not to, like, to keep a secret, but to know. Kira explained it to not distract I... the captain from fighting the Romulan warbird. Fair, fair. I'm about to spill all this tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, let the drama begin. Uh, so yeah, I would like to reach out to uh, Captain Stoddy. Captain? Yeah? What's up? Uh... uh <clears throat> Uh, how, how are you feeling, uh, Captain? I'm not going to lie, Lieutenant. I'm feeling really good right now. I mean, we really oh. kicked butt and, um, got them like hightailing away in just the best fashion and i'm like oh my god it, uh, it couldn't have gone better it really couldn't have um ha, ha. well so what's up you um seem uh not great what's 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 um on? Captain, I, I, I don't want a repeat of, um, the, of the, was, is Della Lieutenant or a Commander? Commander. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant Commander. Commander. Um, I, I don't want a repeat of the, uh, Lieutenant Commander Dell scenario. Um, that was unintentional, um, but still quite unprofessional. And so as your counselor i would like to keep you abreast on anything that might impact your emotional state and uh you should know that lieutenant nor is on this ship she was apparently one of the two beings that were transported along with uh horatio singer (laughs) <laughs> yes. yes 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 sir singer is on my ship yes at the at the time we i said i i initially felt uh a, a, a combined conscience uh but uh scan showed like i mentioned two and they were the two you did say two okay uh, it was real choppy. They were blocking our communications, I guess. Oh. I understand, sir, but I thought you should know before we uh, met up and you may have been taken off guard. Okay. So, funny enough, I'm really not surprised about the lieutenant. Really? Yeah. Can... I was kind of uh, ordered back to this. Just 
I can't go into full detail, but you know. And so yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But Horatio Singer? What was he doing with them? We have yet to debrief them. I don't know if you would like to wait until you were face to face with them or if you would like us to commence a a, a small debrief. Um, you know, I would definitely like to do that debriefing myself. I understood, Captain. Um, but... Um, good job, Lieutenant. There were two oh, uh, people on that, on that, on that shuttle, and you retrieved them, and they're alive, for now. Well, um, there was a lot riding on the success of this mission, and seeing as how. I'm carrying a good portion of the solidarity. I could only hope to do my best, but your your confidence in me is always welcome and appreciated. You know, when we uh, when we get together for our next, um, you know, official session. Um, I got to tell you about how I got promoted to Lieutenant Commander. Um, Cause it's very similar uh, scenario there, uh, really getting thrown into the fire. Um, and I'm telling you, uh, I did not handle it quite as well as you did. I'm telling you, you know, so it's a good story. I'd love to hear it sometime, sir. It was the, uh, it was, it was, the first um, midriff rip. And I believe that's ah. really how I got promoted. Well, every captain has their signature something, and I suppose a midriff is quite the quite the mark. All right. Well, we're approaching, so... Let's get this uh, reconnection in our way. Yes, sir. I'm just set for our connection. Yep. Uh, so, Hera, you notice that the ship is... You guys are approaching the rendezvous spot. Um, and you get to reconnect the ship. Captain Annette, we're approaching the rendezvous point. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Noor. Um, I assume you know your way around. I'm still kind of new to this. This is be my first reintegration, and I am... Oh, this is the day. <laughs> Starting reintegration sequence. Uh, very well. Um, um, and can, and then as she's doing this, like you hear in your head, where have you been? All Harris says is, or thinks, duty calls. <sighs> Very well. Um, I should let you know that I did make the captain aware of your presence aboard the ship plus also that of uh, Mr. Horatio Singer. And he had some strong opinions about that. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not surprised. And you can tell the captain upon reintegration that Lieutenant Commander Singer is currently in Med Bay. Will do. <clears throat> so Hera, go ahead and roll me a pilot. Starship. Yay. Yay. You reattach. Would you like a 
Five under 87. Oh, damn. <laughs> I would like that very much. There you go. Not even a bump. Not even that when it's locking. It's so smooth. Um, as Hera pilots it in. Huh. Well, apparently, uh, apparently, uh, Lieutenant Norm made it onto the bridge. <laughs> okay. It's good to know. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, are you going to head back to the bridge, Captain, with your bridge crew? Uh, yeah. Um, though, I'm going to say, uh, to, um, Morak, um, There's a uh, there's a gentleman on the ship that may try to you know I don't know you're going to need to be clear, Captain. He might try to assert authority. In <laughs> what way? Over engineering. Mm. Watch out for this man. I shall. Excellent. All right. Let's go, folks. Let's go back to our bridge. Oh, gosh. Hopefully we don't have to do this anytime soon. Oh. As the captain walks onto the bridge. Captain on the bridge. I do like hearing that. Hey. So, um... Annette, good job. Hera. Hey, Captain. Good to see you. Good to be home, Captain. Huh. Would you come to my wait into my uh, ready room, please? Of course, and I would be happy to inform you that Lieutenant Commander Singer is currently in Med Bay unconscious. Oh. Well, then. <laughs> cool. Let me know where he is. I promise I didn't dig into his brain this time. Is he okay? He will be. Oh. I figured. He always seems to come out okay. Despite the many tries to the contrary. Yes. Yes. Uh, the old martyr. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, um, please, after after you. Lieutenant, uh, nor gets up from the seat looks at the ensign that she had booted out of it earlier and then limps after the captain into the into the ready room um and uh <clears throat> as um uh the rest of the crew from the um bridge would come in and stuff like that uh that would include parks um who would just uh, come up and relieve the counselor. <clears throat> um, and before doing so, would just uh, put out a hand. <clears throat> Good job. <laughs> Grab it. Thank you. Um, I can... Definitely see the appeal of being a captain. Mm. So, um, Lieutenant. Captain. What can you tell me? Unfortunately, not a lot. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because I, uh, I was going to leave uh, Sleeping Dogs Lie, um, but you're a uh, big boss man over at the uh, secret p secret station and whatnot. Um, ordered me to go back. Now, obviously, I'm glad he did because, hey. Look, 
that person trapped in the nebula was you. And I will say, I wasn't trapped in the nebula. We were w hanging low until after the Romulan Warburg left so that we could escape because there was no way they were going to enter the field and risk the mm, implosion. Okay. And I know that you were in a pocket of safety, but you know that wasn't going to last too long, right? Don't ever underestimate my patience, Captain. I wouldn't. Um, so what can you tell me? That I do have the information that was requested, and that our, our that at our next docking point it will be transferred off. <clears throat> okay, that was um, that was so vague. Uh. Hera, you also, like you know, I don't know if you want to tell the captain that the singer is not part of the mission. I can say, however, Captain, I may have commandeered Lieutenant Commander Singer for my operation. Why? Because my initial means of escaping became kind of moot. And I did what I had to for the mission. Okay. Um, like, I want to ask you how did Singer end up in a position that you needed his assistance and like, it's not like he was on a Romulan warbird. Initial estimations from sensor readings had the Norman Borlock not too far off. And I knew that if I could get to a long range communicator, that I could reach out to him. He brought the And he shuttle. replied. He did. Because you were on the warbird. I can't say. I can't. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he probably, probably uh, broke protocol um, to answer your, your call that you couldn't put out too wide because you shouldn't be where you were. Um, well, I was stranded. So he came to the aid of a fellow officer, considering that Warbird doesn't technically exist. Yeah. No, I'm just, uh... Yeah, interesting. Okay. Maybe I don't give that guy enough credit. And in the end, I believe that this all fund falls under command's direction that I needed some time away from the Solidarity due to the tension rising. Tension rising? Considering that my captain and our counselor are both from Beta Z and what is happening there, they thought that I could use some time away. And that's where I've been. Fulfilling other missions for Starfleet. While letting it bite over. Not that it can be bited over. I would never say that or admit to that. But I think what they wanted, at least what all the, what all the documentation will say, is that to give you and Lieutenant Annette some space. Because the Dominion like took over Betazoid? And your Avorda, is that what I'm hearing? That's what all the official documentation will read. You know, we don't associate you with that, right? I know. God, I never even put the connection together. But they are millions of clone copies of me. And they were just afraid. At least the admirals 
were concerned that having to see my face would remind you of that. But I'm aware that it's not quite so shallow with you. I can't say much for the counselor, for the lieutenant. I don't know her as well. But I know that it's not a shallow for you, Captain. I think what's going to be more disconcerting is if and when there is a time that I, that I have to deal with any of the folks that have taken over my home world and they all and or a bunch of them end up looking like you, that's going to be disconcerting. I mean, I don't think most of them have green hair, Captain. Oh, good. And BT Dub <clears throat> loving the hair. Med Bay to the bridge. Uh, Park's here. Or, no, Med Bay to Captain. Okay, thank you. Study. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, Maddie would you like? Study here. Um, Captain, uh, my patient is not being cooperative. Oh, God, he's <laughs> awake, isn't he? He is. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um,. Tell him to sit down and shut up, and I'll be right there. Roger, Captain. You hear in the background, I'm fine. Man, this one time, they used a phaser on my brain. <sighs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so. It was one time. <laughs> um, We're not going to talk about how I phasered two officers. So, um, you look like you need to go to Med Bay. Oh, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. Harris says while leaning slightly off to the side, hand over the opposite set of ribs. Uh huh. Could you hand me that um, pad there? With pleasure, sir. And I take my free hand. I very carefully reach over. <laughs> Oops. Captain, I would just like to remind you that I just did a flawless reintegration of our starship. Yeah, you did. This is a little bit cruel. I know. But, um... You know, deception is futile. And why would I ever lie? Uh-huh. Let's go to Med Bay. I really just want to play uh, pin the handcuffs on Singer so that he'll stay on the actual table. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> um, I feel like those poor, poor medical officers don't really understand what they're in for. Aren't you glad you're not a medical officer right now? You know, sir, I really, truly am. Uh, me too, me too. Okay, let's go. What is Maroc and Annette and Jack Stat doing while the captain and Nor are <clears throat> having this conversation? Uh, I've just been informed that someone might try and take over my engineering section, which is going to happen over my dead fucking body. <laughs> so I'm asking for uh, like one level above from the usual level of diagnostics so that if anything changes, I know about it. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask that that be done at the start of each shift for as long as he's on board. So when you get <laughs> down to engineering, mm -hmm. the first thing you notice is Ducky is shook. Ducky is shook. What's wrong? Oh, Ducky. Uh, no, nothing, Commander. Then why do you look so afraid? Speak. I command you. 
Lieutenant Commander Singer is on board. I am given to understand he may attempt to interfere with the optimal running of our ship. I will not allow such a thing to happen. Mm-hmm. You do not look reassured. You should. <laughs> <laughs> It's just uh, Singer uh, or the lieutenant commander. He's he was he was my first commanding officer, and he put a lot on me, and it made me a better person. But but at the same time, it was really hard, and he was he was he was different. He wasn't like you. I will assume that is a compliment. Also, if he attempts to give you an order tell him to come find me you do not answer to him this is not his ship uh you see him his shoulders like lighten a little bit okay commander excellent let's get those diagnostics underway yes commander and he he seems more relaxed now that you've You've reassured him that Singer isn't going to be on his ass. Um, <laughs> he can mess with Ducky over my dead body, and that is a statement that <laughs> Ulfric and Morak totally agree with. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's pretty bad when the Klingon is nicer to somebody than the human. Yeah. <laughs> um what about uh Annette and Jack's dad? Are you guys doing anything special or um I think uh now that she's kinda of like back to being a counselor, she's gonna try to do some um Like trying to try to do like an emotional evaluation of like the civilian um, crew members for like because I'm I'm assuming that did like all that stuff between the saucer separating and if the there anxiety are like anxiety of being in a military situation. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of just walking the halls, just getting a general feel of the mm-hmm. of the uh, of the civilian populace. Going yeah. On? They're reassured. You get a lot of thoughts of how good Lieutenant Annette did and how they were originally scared and how they they didn't know if they were going to be all right, but then... The, the counselor did such a good job and accomplished a mission and everybody stayed safe and nobody got hurt and everybody's just, it just worked out so well. And that's the general feeling you get from the uh, civilian populace. Okay. Ryan, don't make me cry on this fucking Twitch. I'm not doing this today. <laughs> yes. Let the tears flow. Uh, um, I think after getting that feeling, she's still she's still going to put um, just do like a general broad overview of um, if there's any uh, families or um, any crew that uh, want to schedule any counseling sessions with me um, just for an overall wellness check, uh, please don't hesitate to come to my quarters. This little girl comes up, and tugs on your your uniform. Yes, sweetheart. Um, um, can I be a counselor when I grow up? Ryan, fuck you. (laughs) Don't do this. Not today, sir. It's Tuesday and it's the Wendy's. (laughs) Be anything you want when you grow up, baby girl. Uh, Jack Stat, what about you? Are you going to do anything special? Um, <clears throat> when Jack Stat sees Stati and Noor heading for Medbay, Jack Stat is actually going to follow along because 
She is fairly handy with first aid, so she's going to see if she can pitch in. Okay. Okay. Um, when you get to the med bay... Oh, doctor. How you doing? Good, good. Um, can you deal with this, please? Yeah. Singer. Study. Uh huh. Hi. It's Captain. How's it going? Oh, sorry, Captain. Yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> so, does uh does your captain know you're here? <coughs> Well, um, to be honest, Captain, I may have took a civilian runabout to go get Nor. A civilian runabout? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't steal one of the Borlaug ships. That would just get me in more trouble. <laughs> I lean over to Jackstat on my limping side, and I just go. Don't they just act like the perfect married couple? <laughs> also, do. hi, I'm Lieutenant Noor. Hi, Dr. Jackstab. A could, pleasure. Could somebody look at her, please? <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, you little motherfucker, come here. All right. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's good to see you. Ratio. Good to see you too. Last time I saw you, you were flying away on a sentient ship. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild, right? Um, well, that didn't take too long. Um, and here I am. Now look at you, captain of a galaxy-class starship. Yeah, pretty impressive. Do you know much about solidarity? Oh, God, yes. Huh. I have warned my chief engineer about you. Why? I wouldn't do anything. I, <laughs> oh, ow. I, I, laugh. I mean, that's hilarious. Um, but have you had the pleasure of meeting Commander Morak? No, I can't. Morak! Uh-huh. No, I haven't met Morak. Why? Uh oh, I'm just curious. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get along just great. Listen, Captain, I'm not here to step on any toes. Hera just needed some help. I, I, I got her out. We're fine. You know, you can drop me off back at the Borlog. Maybe. Um, doctor, how is he actually? Um, he needs rest. He needs rest. Can he drink? I can always drink. Shut up, Horatio. Doctor, can he drink? <sighs> No, Captain. <sighs> really? I wouldn't advise it. He has massive uh, internal hemorrhaging that we're still trying to get under control. The nanites are working their, their magic, but... Okay. That's fair. Um, then... Okay. But he can leave sick bay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be fine. Okay, Horatio. Let's go to the holodeck. Okay, that's. Weird. Are you asking me out on a date, Captain? Do you think I would ask you out on a date? No, Captain. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> that's a good call. Married couple. Um, Super married. But. I think it would be nice for us to sit down and have a drink 
And on the holodeck, we can have a drink without having a drink. Okay. Okay? That sounds good to me, Captain. Okay. He, like, hesitantly gets up. He's trying not to show that he's in pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I can hear you internally screaming right now, right? Oh, God, I forgot. And he reaches behind his neck. And he presses something. Must be broken. <sighs> Here, Hera. And he tosses this little device. Ah! <clears throat> that side. Huh. Is that supposed to block all this yeah it's that one fried in the in the battle but it, i guess it was still working I, I heard you guys thought we were trill uh-huh it would be terrible to have singer as a symbiote i'm just saying uh-huh you only wish lieutenant i do not <laughs> There's enough of this going around in here. I don't need a second opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, so Hera's going to get looked at. And um, Singer and I are going to go have a drink. So he stumbles out and following you to the hollow. Uh... Lieutenant Noor, is there anything you want to do in sickbay? Um, as I'm being hyposprayed by mm -hmm. Dr. Jackstat. So, do you want to go get a drink at 10 forward after this? I would love that. Excellent. I think there's quite a bit to talk about. I'm sure. Del and to celebrate. Rubbed off on Noor. Wow. I think that's the I think that's the wrong vibe that you're picking up there. Speaking <laughs> of Hera has no idea what happened to Dell. None. None. <clears throat> Alright, is there anything anybody else wants to do? Before we go to the captain and singer. Nope. All right. Walk up to the hollow deck. Are you gonna? What are you gonna do? Nothing. You remuted yourself. Damn Damn it. Stupid thing. Um, I'm gonna go with. Okay, let's do. Um. Let's do program study 12 chill run program. And as the doors open, it's like, it's like a, um, uh, it's like a beach resort. You now, um, very relaxed, very chill. Um, and there's like this little, um, this little area where there's like, um, like a cabana, you know, little covered area, um, lounge chairs and like, uh, fake fruity drinks with big umbrellas and, and stuff like that. Um, and occasional, um, Occasional houseboys that walk around and bring drinks in and out. Yeah. This reminds me of when we went to uh, Riza. Remember that? Yeah. This is like that place in Riza. Very similar. Uh huh. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd keep it chill um you know since you're still healing and um uh gosh now i wish i had some island music i don't have any island music <laughs> um 
I mean, I, I could have spent money. Um, but, like, have a seat. Thank you, Captain. And a drink. Um, which, you know, isn't gonna hurt. So, how's, how are things going on at the, at the, uh, Borlock? Uh, you know, same old, same old. Uh, not gonna lie, Captain's a little jealous of your mission. Huh. Well, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that... Well, no, I'm not surprised, but... Well, you know the whole reason why they sent us, right? Less threatening. Yeah, exactly. Now, tell that to those Romulans. Yeah. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> don't even know, man. <laughs> I am not going to sugarcoat wow. that shit. Um, wow, that was impressive. I, yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't take a whole lot of credit. Um, you know, the crew did really well, and they did not. Um, but I think really what was on our side was their underestimation. That. Could be. This is a nice ship. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Although, you know, I probably increased the power output in the... Yeah, I wouldn't even try to think about that, man. Um, because Morak would scalp you. Morak. Yeah. I think I'll like Morak. You would like Morak. You aren't too dissimilar, except, well, <clears throat> Morak, um, follows protocol, um, generally, uh, has a, uh, you know, a team that really likes to follow him. You know? He doesn't really... <sighs> He doesn't create buckies or duckies or whatever the fuck. You know? Oh, that's right. Duckies here. Yeah. Ducky. Oh, I can't He's wait to see Ducky. He's thriving here. I knew he would. I knew he would. God, that, that kid is <laughs> shitting bricks when he found out you were here. <laughs> so he's calmed down. I don't know what happened, but... You know... He's a good kid. Yeah. Well, and he is a good kid now. He was a good kid then. I don't know what he was then. I mean, I guess he showed promise, but... He needed... He needed... To buck up a little bit, that's all. Hmm. Anything... And okay. I, hear, I hear he's doing good here. He is doing good here. Okay. Um, which I I personally credit to Morak, but that's me, you know. That's me. Um, so, Dell. Um, Dale had a kid. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, wow. Apparently, he's been in a relationship this whole time. And you didn't know? Uh, yeah, no, 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 I did not know. Wow. With, with my favorite bartender. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. I know, right? How do people keep that shit away? I don't. I don't know. Uh. I mean, I really thought I knew Dell, but I, it's really not. I just. 
I know Dell. I just didn't know Vervin very well. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's uh, that's usually how it goes. They change so much when they when they switch hosts. They change, but they don't, right? Yeah. Still, you know, great first officer, but I think they're gonna need some time off. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I can't go back to the Borlog. What? What? I'm AWOL. That's what I was sensing. Okay. Hera needed help. Okay. Okay. I'll go back. I'll get kicked out of Starfleet, just like we always knew would happen. And go work on one of those freighters somewhere. Heard about Betazoid? Betazoid? Yeah. Yeah. The Borlog is being reassigned. To what? War. <sighs> Captain's asking to be stationed on that front. On what? On that front. It's a good place. Why? She'll do well. Okay. Um. Yeah, you're not getting kicked out of Starfleet. Not on my watch. But... I have a chief engineer. And I like this one. <laughs> Ouch! That hurt. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I meant that that hurt. That healing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't uh, really laugh that hard, man. Uh, we never did get along, did we? Um. <clears throat> well, let me see. Um, you. Um liked practical jokes oh yes um which i mean have their place i guess and i don't know i think i think the crux of our conflict really lied in how close you were to the captain and I was her first officer <coughs> yeah it, it was almost like uh, there were two of us yeah and each I, buy in for mom's attention well the thing is is that it's very difficult for me to do my job when I didn't quite have, I wasn't quite the ear that I should have been, you know? I mean, it didn't stop me from this, but still. 
Look at you, man. Last time I saw you, you were talking about leaving. You never even wanted to be a first officer. I know, right? Um, but I do love what I'm doing. I do love the ship. And the ship is really great. They don't make them like these old galaxy class. Yeah. Um, anyway. I may have a temporary assignment for you. But I need to talk to some folks. Are you trying to save my career again? Somebody has to. Until you realize that you need to. <clears throat> Finish your drink and go to bed. Oh, you gotta let me see these engines first. Bed first, then engines. You, Captain. You Captain's the orders. You the boss. <clears throat> Never forget that. All right, so we cut away. What's everybody doing? Para, Jackstat, Annette, anything? I think uh, Dr. Jackstat and I are probably in 10 forward. <laughs> I believe Annette's like back in her back in her quarters trying to meditate and recenter herself with a glass of wine. Okay. Uh, Morak. Morak's going to head up to the counselors' quarters. By the way. Actually. Okay. And just buzz the doorbell. It's open. Counselor. Uh, <clears throat> Commander Morak. It's uh, interesting to see you here. Everything all right? Everything is... With me, yes. I am concerned about this man who may take over engineering. Oh, uh, Mr. Singer. Yes, I, uh, I pulled his file, um, a little while ago. And I can see why you have some trepidations. Uh, are you worried that captain may try to uh put him in engineering or do you think he might try to uh try to re replace you as as the engineer he would be a fool to try i am concerned for lieutenant ducky oh has 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 ducky and she like and she like gets up and like goes over and grabs like a little um a little notepad that sits on her that sits close by her her couch and just starts like taking like brief notes um has has lieutenant ducky mentioned any any anything about about this uh member that you find concerning he is terrified of him really terror does not suit a man of his age well, I mean, it's perfectly natural for uh, men to feel fear, even as they 
get older, it's a perfectly natural response. Um, would look at you and probably piss their pants, not going to lie. Um, so I, 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 I do understand how... Um, has uh, Ducky given you any examples or has he um, made it aware that he feels a little uncomfortable or, or, or threatened by by Mr. Stinger? Singer? He has said that he is afraid of him. Okay. Um, I am not accustomed to subordinates being afraid of anyone else. Ah, ah, oh, okay. I'm okay. Reading between the lines. Um, I know well, how to help them get over when they are afraid of me. Uh, I do not know how to help Ducky with this. Well, that also makes sense too. The uh, a ship can't run if the crew doesn't feel at ease with each other. And not though, you know, you have to be lovey-dovey with the person you work with, but there needs to be some level of amicability and respect. So I do understand that, especially um, in a very tense and delicate area as engineering. Um, how about this? And she like she like kind of like, scribbles like some more notes. I will um, contact Ducky and see if I can schedule a session with him just to try to get, get something on the books. Um, if this singer fellow is going to be with us for a while and I'll speak to the captain about it to see, um, maybe we can work out some kind of plan so that Ducky doesn't feel feel so stressed out or feel uncomfortable by him. I'd really hate it to happen. Um, did you did you want me to keep you updated or would you just kind of rather stick to the shadows as it were? I believe that you and Lieutenant Ducky can work together very well and he can inform me if more assistance is, is required. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and also commander, if, um, if anybody else or if, if you feel that anybody else is a little bit more not, you know, feeling comfortable uh, with like anybody. Like you right now. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's been a long day. I'm not even going to hold you up. I stopped being a counselor about two bottles in. Um, <laughs> you have been but, drinking. Yes. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> uh, Morak is going to go over to the replicator and say, Replicator, blood wine. <laughs> it's <been> a <laughs> Just, long night. <laughs> you have survived your first solo command today. This should be celebrated. Yeah. It, um, it should. It it really should. And you know, the really sad part is the only thing I want to do is tell my parents. And I can't. Your parents so, have passed? No. No. But um, I'm sure you've heard or words gotten around about what's going on. Um, with Betazoid and the Dominion, and she kind of starts getting like a little bit like emotional. It's like two bottles of wine in, so you know, girl is mm -hmm. strong. Um, yeah, it's um, I'd be lying if I said that. In the back of my mind, I kind of wish it wasn't real, and with everything we've had going on, we haven't really had time to think about or process what that could mean for us, what our families are going through, if they're okay. I haven't been able to reach my parents in a while. And my dad, he's a bit of a headstrong man who doesn't like to be bossed around. And 
this is definitely one of those times where I can see it getting him in very, very big trouble. So it is, it is hard for us. We signed up knowing that we could go into conflict, find it an unlikely. It's very difficult when that comes to those we left behind. You are brave for facing these feelings, Lieutenant Annette. I will take that as the highest compliment I've ever got. And she like holds out her glass, like clink it with, with rocks. Clinks back. Right. Um, <clears throat> Right. You guys done? Yeah. We're going to cut over to uh, Jack, Stat, and Nor real quick. Um, you guys are having a drink and 10 forward? Mm-hmm. You guys having a discussion at all? Did you guys want to talk at all? Or... So I don't think I've seen you around Solidarity, and you're obviously a civilian. What brought you to the bridge, of all places? I've been lurking around. What do you do while you're lurking around? A little bit of everything. I keep my hands in the sciency pots. You are nearly as big as I am. I know, it's very fun, isn't it? <laughs> Did you enjoy acting as an officer? It was fun. Have you thought about enlisting? considered it uh, do you have any lieutenant hara you start feeling a vibration in your pants um and that's when you realize your sector 31 communicator is vibrating while I'm still having my conversation, because like my hand's already in my lap while I'm having one drink, I'm gonna slowly and covertly stick my hand back in my pocket and just like turn it off for now. Okay. <clears throat> Reach in there, you just kind of click it off and then go back to your conversation. And with that, I think that's a good place for us to call it. We're running out of time so welcome back dana i'm so happy to be back so happy to have you all right so we're gonna go around and uh tell us who you are um who you played where we can find you and what your favorite part of the episode was um so we're gonna start with the doctor, Dr. Jack Stat. Kate. Hello, I am Kate. I use she, her pronouns. I am Argon Kitten everywhere on the internet. I am part of this wonderful game the night before every other Monday. I am part of the Monster Hunter game, uh, High Family Values, which is also headed up by Ryan, assuming he doesn't kill all of us, which mm. he's trying very hard to do. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what we'll do after that. Uh, You're all something fun. As witches. We're all going <laughs> to get burned as witches. I'm not. I'm the only one who doesn't do magic. Now that that stopped fine. anyone from burning witches before. That's fair. But if they try to drown me, I'll just drown like a regular person. <laughs> It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Um. So. <laughs> Uh, when I am not on this wonderful channel, I am the co-creator, co-GM of Christmas Tide Ohio. We are a Kids on Bikes actual play podcast. We take place in the 1980s. It is an anthology series in a town that is Christmas all year round. Um, we are currently in our fourth season. Um, our kids are like nine and ten years old. And it's banana pants. That's, that's all I got to say about that. Um, you can find us at ChristmasTideOH on Twitter and Instagram and all of your favorite podcatching 
pod catchers. I, I don't, I don't know the word. I, I don't know the word. That's all. All right. And thank you, Kate. What was your favorite part? Oh, my favorite part. Um, the part where we kicked the Romulan's asses. Kick the Romulan's asses off. That was crazy. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Thank you, Kate. Jay. Oh, hi, lovely. That goes by Jace. I use share pronouns. Um, if you didn't like me on here, uh, you could also uh, find me sometimes on like Sundays doing like stuff with like Maddie um, in uh, Duval and Dragons and also in Dragon Lance, um, Dragons of Rebirth. So many titles, so many things. Um, and if you don't <laughs> like me on any of them too, you can always go to TikTok and see me do shenanigans at J Courts Five. And if you don't like me on TikTok, baby, I know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> uh, my favorite part uh, was honestly uh, like that coming back. Yes, Miss North, and just that whole bit of like. Her running, like, the, like the, the the immediate panic and probably fear when she found out the saucer was like separated and just all the ass out. <laughs> that was that was good. That was good. Thank you, Jay. Okay, um, Dana. Hi, everybody. I am Dana. Dana Levy on the internet. And I played Lieutenant Hera North tonight. I'm so happy to be back. Uh, you can catch me here now every other Tuesday playing with my friends on the USS Solidarity and every other Wednesday on the opposite week playing Dragonlance Legacy of Chaos. I now do two things on the internet again. It's so exciting. Hopefully more, maybe, when school lets out. Because that's next week. Oh, my God. Um, and I will also be resuming my own personal Twitch streams on my own channel at DanaLeeB because... I like streaming video games and I've really missed doing it. Um, you catch me on the social medias, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram. I don't do things a lot, but I'm there. And my favorite part of tonight outside of being back, because yay, um, I would have to say, honestly, Marax reaction to being told that their spot may be contested <laughs> and i would like to see singer fucking try <laughs> see her we get his ass whooped beat <laughs> <laughs> to him thoroughly thank you dana Ulfrig. Hello, I go by Ulfrig on the interwebs. I use they and she pronouns and like it when people swap back and forth. Um, this is the only stream you can catch me doing at the moment, but I'm very active with the chatty fans, both with Healthy and Heart Hands um, and on the Discord. Uh, so if you want to chat there, I am more than happy to chat there because it's an absolutely lovely group of people. Um, and sometimes they let me play fun games with them. So that's a bonus. Oh, and favorite part tonight was um, I actually really liked seeing Stotty and Singer and that kind of really quite soft touch that Stotty had of like, I'm going to warn you without telling you that I'm warning you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that Singer's cost so much chaos on this ship mm -hmm. that makes me so happy that makes me so happy thank you Ulfrig um Maddie and I did that to myself you know I I I let I let him live in my in my brain and yeah I shouldn't anyway I'm Maddie aka so many games these he and pronouns and you know um, I get to be the captain here, and I get to be um, a player and dungeon master along the days of the week. Um, I do a lot of stuff here. Um, 
come hang out with us. We do shows here five days a week. Um, and then starting in a couple weeks, I'm going to be running a game over at the Amphitheater, um, which will be um, a 12-episode arc um, where uh, we're doing a magic school. But it's not Strixhaven. It's, it's our own creation. Um, and it's pretty awesome. It's called Arkenholtz University um, Schools of Evolvement and Longevity. And uh, we're revealing the cast all week long on Twitter. So far, we've revealed April Ray Gunn and Duval King Jacob. And I'm telling you, um, the cast of this is amazing. Um, and tomorrow's reveal will be someone from the chatty fam. Yes. Someone you may know and love. So, um, keep it on Twitter. Keep it on the, make sure you're following the Amphitheater on Twitter. Um, keep out for those. And of course, um, my Twitter, because I um, have been retweeting those with my own flair and comments and stuff. Um, and then, yeah. And then we got a bunch of reveals. I made a bunch of graphics for this thing. And I've worked really hard on it. Um, and it's kind of a labor of love. So, yeah. See how it goes. Um, but I also love my Dragonlance. And uh, we do that a couple nights a week here. Um, our next one will be uh, Legacy of Chaos. And uh, hopefully, yes, definitely, finishing Mari's Test... Episodes long. <sighs> um, but we will see what um, how Mari does, and if uh, Mari, you know, decides to continue with sorcery or not. I guess is really the case. Um, yeah, so much going on here. Anyway, um, I'm also graphic artist. I do graphics. I do the you know, like I made this awesome overlay. Look at this bitching thing. It's awesome. Um, I can make this for you. I can also make opening sequences and uh, logos and um, uh, custom merch and stuff like that. Uh, you can see my portfolio at so many games work. You can see you can hire me direct at kofi.com forward slash Maddie and you can go buy some dice or some shirts or tumblers or whatnot over at so nerdware.com. So nerdware, it's with the nerdswear. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, if you're playing Call of Cthulhu, I would suggest... Oh, right. We're sold out of the Rilo dice. Darn. But if you want some really good dice that roll a lot of crits, go get some Zakria dice. Um, because those are awesome. Just don't use them in Call of Cthulhu. All right? Because <laughs> I rolled them at the beginning of the game, and I rolled a 99. Oof. And I was like, I'm not using these. Let me grab the Rilo dice. And, well, they've been on fire for this. Um, they would have been terrible, terrible in D&D. &D. So, anyway. What's your favorite game. part? My favorite part? Um, well, honestly, my favorite part was how cool the reveal looked of Dana coming onto the screen. Because of the way I have the, the Luma wipe happening... And it's just like the way it materialized, um, it looked very Star Trek-y. Um, nice. So that, I think, was definitely my favorite part. But, you know, because Dana is my favorite part. <laughs> Always. Always. So. Thank you, Maddie. And I'm Ryan, at Bailey Marauden on Twitch and Twitter. You can find me on this channel five nights a week, either... Or uh, not five nights a week, but five times in two weeks. Um, so every other Monday, or every Monday, you can find me here, mm -hmm. either running um, Monster of the Week High Family Values or playing in Maddie's Homebrew campaign, which is amazing. I'm loving it. Um, everybody wants my character to die. Um, every other Tuesday, running this amazing game every thursday either running or oh wow i'm in six games you are in six games okay 
every Thursday, either running Call Thursday, uh, The Loft, which is my darkest Call of Cthulhu season yet, or alternating Thursdays where I am a horrible, terrible person who's part of the Spanish Inquisition in Born of Flesh, um, which is amazing. And then every other Sunday playing in Dragonlance, Dragons of Rebirth as everybody's most hated Knight of the Sword seemed to be everybody's most hated Knight of the Rose now of Silver Light um and my favorite part I had a lot but everybody said them Dana returning Morak getting all up in in business cause because singers on board. Um, all of those were my favorite parts. But there were two other parts that weren't mentioned. Oh, you guys whooping that? Uh, Romulan? They were all my favorite parts. But two parts that weren't mentioned. Number one. Tia Annette going through the ship. And getting that feeling from everybody. And the little kid going... <laughs> That, that was amazing. Number two, Morap calming Ducky down. That was awesome. Yeah. I love it. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Back to you, Maddie. Okay. To do our so, sign off. Yeah, we are, um, you know. Heading out of here. Um, we're gonna go get some sleepy buys, um, but we just have a couple things to remind folks um, before we go, and that is Black Lives Fucking Matter. All right, trans rights are human rights. All right, stop the Asian hate. All right, stop telling people with uteruses what to do with them. All right, get over it, dicks. Um, Mental health is health. Climate change is real. Uh, free the fucks. And when given the opportunity, choose love. All right? And Lamar. Always choose and. Lamar. <laughs> but if nothing else, choose kindness. All right? Love your faces in all the right places. And Lamar, talking to you, I love your face. <laughs> Bye. Oh, we're raiding still. I've still, I set it up. I should have set it up. I should have gotten it. I should have hit the button earlier. I should have hit the button earlier, but there we go. Bye.